Maybe there will come a moment when we have a Call of Duty championship conducted on drones. They say it's the fireworks of the future. The drone shows are rapidly evolving technology. There are many zones where flying is simply legally prohibited. Everyone knows how drones are used today, not just for entertainment, unfortunately. So what is a drone light show? It's when there are many quadcopters, not necessarily quadcopters, actually, they can be drones of any configuration. They connect together in a formation, each with lights forming shapes in the sky, inscriptions, logos, basically anything. In short, essentially, it's arranging drones into specific patterns. Sometimes it's compared to fireworks, like they say it's the fireworks of the future. But the cool thing and the main difference from fireworks is that with the help of drones, we can actually depict anything up to a detailed portrait of a person, create any shapes, images of any animals, buildings, bridges, basically anything that comes to mind. It can all be done with drone shows. No, no, of course not. At the dawn of drone shows, there were even jokes on the internet. People were genuinely asking in the comments, how do 1,000 drones fly? Is it really 1,000 people? Are they standing with remote controllers? Because in the traditional sense, a drone is something with a remote control and you steer it left, right, up, down. No, drones for drone shows don't work like that. They don't have a remote control. They are operated via a computer. The computer is connected to a base station, which has an antenna, and this antenna accordingly broadcasts signals directly to all drones for takeoff, landing, and overall communication is done via radio. Behind the creation of a show, there is always quite a large team because there are many processes and one person, of course, cannot handle it all. So who do we actually need? What kind of people do we need to create a drone show? First of all, let's start with those who directly manufacture the drones. That is, we need engineers who will create the drone, who will ensure it flies without errors and that it is precisely positioned because in a drone show, it is very important for each drone to maintain accuracy literally to within a few centimeters. If it moves left or right, the entire image will fall apart and become blurry. Accordingly, it all starts with the drone developers. These developers not only design the drones, but also the software that helps these drones fly. Software on the computer that accordingly plots their route. Secondly, to create a show in general, of course, we need what we call animators, but in the world, they might be called differently. This is a person who, in the first place, draws the image that will be shown in the sky. Secondly, this is the person who animates this image. It means giving it life and movement. That is, the picture should not just remain static because that's quite boring. The picture should move. The picture should flow from one to another. All of this significantly adds visual impact and makes the show incredibly cool, appealing, captivating and engaging. And thirdly, very important characters in launching the show are the pilots themselves. These are the people who arrive at the site. They check to ensure the location is suitable for the show because it can't be launched just anywhere. They check to ensure there are no interferences in the airwaves in the radio broadcast because all of this operates using radio technologies. They position the drones on the site, make sure everything is set up correctly, that everything is turned on, that all drones are functioning properly and so on. Their task accordingly is to launch all of this using a computer algorithm to ensure everything takes off, that everything is displayed as intended, and that in the end, everything returns back to the base. All drones are intact, nothing falls, nothing breaks, and the client is happy. Many people remain behind the scenes, but overall, these are the three main groups. Well, first of all, each drone is equipped with a GPS receiver, a receiver that communicates with the satellite system. Firstly, it's important to note that this receiver is highly accurate because each of us has a similar receiver in our phones, but its accuracy is insufficient. Drones are equipped with a super high precision receiver that allows determining the position of each drone in space to within a few centimeters. It is necessary to transfer the animation that animators created on their computers directly into the drones. This is called a flight mission. A flight mission is essentially a detailed and comprehensive file for the drone where it says, bro, at this specific second, you need to be at such and such altitude, this much to the right, this much forward, backward, down. And at this moment, it must either be lit in some color or not lit at all. Each drone has an understanding of where it should be at any given time, and that's how they all fly and align accordingly. The interesting thing is that many people think that drones are somehow connected and communicate with each other. Such technology is being developed. It already exists, but it hasn't been perfected yet and therefore isn't used on a large scale. Drones do not communicate with each other. They have no awareness of their companions, and therefore each drone simply knows where it should be. 
And the animator's task is also to ensure that none of them collide or occupy the same space at the same time. And when the drones are rearranging, when one formation changes to another, no collisions occur and the trajectories do not intersect. In general, I can simply explain the process of how it happens with us when a client approaches us. Usually a client comes to us and says, I have such and such an event here and there. And accordingly, I want a drone show. First of all, we ask them where it will be, when it will be, and so on. It's important for us to understand this because we have a fleet of drones and it might be fully booked or perhaps at the moment there are no drones available for this client, unfortunately. Secondly, we need to know where because there are many zones where flying is simply legally prohibited. These include, for example, airports. It's clear why due to safety considerations to prevent collisions and to ensure drones do not interfere with airplanes and so on. In short, everything that is guarded by the Ministry of Defense, these are all no-fly zones. Sometimes simply due to various emergencies occurring in the region or surrounding areas, the airspace might be closed. Therefore, it's very important for us to understand where and when this happens. The location is suitable, the timing is right, and drones are available. Great, we can proceed to discuss the concept. We want to understand what the client wants, what kind of event they have. That is, if it's a wedding, it will be one concept, a birthday, another concept. Sometimes the government might come and say, we have a super celebration, national day. We want all the city's residents to just enjoy, be happy. We need to show pride. We need to show patriotism. If it's a sports event, like a football club's victory in a championship, that's a fourth concept. So everything really depends on the type of event. Once we have agreed on the concept, we discuss what exactly we want to showcase. For example, if it's a football team's victory, we understand that firstly, the client wants to show that it's football. So there should be either a football or a football player. They will definitely want to display their team's logo. Maybe they want to depict fans waving flags, scarves, or anything else, and so on. Next, once we understand which figures the client wants to show in general, we ask them to provide firstly references to avoid discrepancies in understanding what they want. Most often we ask to provide the necessary images to accurately depict what the client has envisioned to avoid any misunderstandings. After that, we need to animate everything, which also needs to be coordinated with the client. Some clients just want to show static figures one after another, write some inscriptions and so on. Some clients come with more sophisticated desires. They want everything to spin rotate continuously without stopping and so on. In general, a lot depends on the client and we always try to adapt to their wishes and their concept. If there is no concept, we propose our own. Accordingly, when everything is ready and agreed upon, the process directly begins. Animators then directly sit down with their 3D software and start working. Before even going there and launching anything, an inspection is conducted, so to speak. The pilot arrives at the site and inspects it. First of all, he checks to ensure that drones can be placed there. Because if the show is large, it could involve 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, or even 10,000 drones. All these units need to be positioned somewhere. If we understand that, yes, the drones fit, great, the location is suitable. Next, he needs to ensure that nothing obstructs the radio signal. Because the drones, as I mentioned earlier, communicate with satellites. This means we need to have a sufficiently large area of open sky. In our practice, there was a case where we were taking off in the port. There was a ship nearby and it was blocking signals. It was interfering with the drone's operation. And when the ship was moved away, everything started working. Besides understanding where to position the drones, he also needs to ensure that nothing will obstruct their takeoff because drones ascend vertically, so he must check for the presence of trees, check for lampposts, wires or anything else that might be in the way. In other words, drones must be able to take off vertically without obstruction, as they will need to return via the same route. Accordingly, the pilot has inspected the site, ensured everything is fine, there is space, no obstacles, nothing is in the way. He says the location is suitable, guys, let's proceed. And our project manager also gets involved. And this is the person who organizes communication between the pilots, the back office and the client. He establishes communication and ensures that all processes run smoothly and everything works out. Thus, this is how the preparation process for the show takes place. If we are talking about Dubai, a number of permits need to be obtained. 
for example, from civil aviation. We must notify the aviation authority that we will be flying here so they can inform other air traffic participants not to fly there at that time. Secondly, everyone knows how drones are used today, not just for entertainment, unfortunately. Because of this, we must notify the Ministry of Defense so they also know that drone operations are taking place in this area. The drone show can be very much compared to theater. A good analogy because in theater there is always a dress rehearsal before the main performance. We have the same thing in drone shows. We conduct dress rehearsal to ensure technical functionality of the drones to make sure that the animation is drawn correctly. Nothing has fallen out or failed. Everything is smooth and beautiful. In short, the task of the test launch to ensure that everything is okay. Essentially, it's the same drone show as the final day, but just for us. We usually launch it later at night. We can turn off the lights on the drones to avoid attracting attention if the show is a surprise and so on. But essentially, it's the same show. Accordingly, then comes day X and the task, including for the project manager, is to visit the location where the audience will be to ensure that they can see everything, that nothing obstructs their view because sometimes it happens that the drone show is combined with some other performance elements like 3D mapping perhaps, and maybe some fireworks or even a live performance by artists on a stage. And it's important for us to understand that everything is centered, beautiful, not shifted to the left or right, that everything is as the director intended. If there is a special guest at the event, a VIP, we also need to ensure that from their platform, from their seat, everything is clearly visible, especially if the show is specifically for them. We place a person right there and they sit and watch everything. And the final day essentially just repeats this dress rehearsal, only everything is for real. The pilots arrive, they set up the site, arrange their equipment and position the drones. And at the moment, either according to the timing or by signal via radio, we launch the drones and sit back to watch the show. Well, as for watching, the audience watches, enjoys, records on video, has fun and so on. The pilot's task at this moment is to ensure that everything flies smoothly, that no drone suddenly falls anywhere. If an emergency situation occurs, the pilots have instructions on what to do. In such cases, they land the drones, bring them back home. So while the audience is enjoying the show, the team on site is still working. And once the entire show has flown, everything returns. The drones return to the base and land on the ground. The team's task on site is to pack everything up and head home satisfied. The drone shows are rapidly evolving performances, rapidly evolving technology. I mean, I still remember when drone shows first appeared. They were essentially just light bulbs flying in the sky. Nowadays, it's becoming super popular to attach pyrotechnics to drones. They can be like all sorts of sprays, fountains. You can attach smoke to drones. You can attach different types of various flashes and you can attach different types of lasers. Whatever your imagination can come up with, you can attach to a drone and make a show out of it. The highlight today is probably the technology of interactive shows where we can essentially form a screen in the sky out of drones and it's basically like the screen of your television and you can play any game on this television since the technology has just emerged it's all sorts of simple games like snake mario or maybe some basic ping pong but i think the more drones appear in the sky the more we will be able to create a matrix for our screen and accordingly the more detailed games we will be able to load onto it maybe there will come a moment when we have a call of duty championship conducted on drones Overall, thank you for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and don't forget to like this video. Now you have a much better understanding of the process of creating a show, what it is, how it works, and the people behind it. If you have any questions about how it works, maybe I didn't explain something or perhaps something was unclear, be sure to ask them in the comments and we will answer all of them.